Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us for our special Christmas Eve service this year. We are so thankful that you're with us. And our, our hope tonight is that we share the story that changed the world, uh, the story that changed the course of history, the story of God sending his one and only son Jesus into the world out of his immeasurable love in order to rescue us, in order to save us from our sins and give us eternal life. And so I, I hope tonight, if you're watching, if you're with us and you're worshiping, that your heart would be encouraged by this story and that it wouldn't just change the course of world history, but that it would change your life. It would change your heart as you trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. You know, this time of the year, we are uh, reminded that God went on a mission when he sent his son Jesus into the world. Jesus was on mission. He came with a purpose in mind. He came out of his love for the world. And the Bible says, just as uh, the Father sent him, he sends us as well. So we are to go out into the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. And this time of the year, one of the big things that our church does at Taylor's Valley is support the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So we want to begin this service tonight with a focus on missions and would encourage you, uh, if you're thinking about what can you do this time of the year to make an impact for Christ, give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So we're going to show a quick video and then I look forward to worshiping with you. Thanks for joining us tonight. When you have been told from the time that you're born that Jesus is not God, the Bible's corrupted, and to follow Jesus is to commit blasphemy and you're going to be turned away from your family, that's a whole other task. And so we're going to the tip of the spear because we're getting to people that have only heard lies of Jesus. They've heard his name, but they've been told lies about him and to reject and to not listen. What we do, it's very hard. It takes a lot of time and a lot of sacrifice on a lot of areas. But when you see someone get it, when you see them come from darkness to light, and they literally know that their life is forever changed, and no matter what persecution or whatever happens, that they're with Christ, that they're His for eternity, that's worth it. God sees the bigger picture, or maybe Someone in our work sees one or two Muslims come to Christ after three or four years. But God takes those two or three and snowballs. We've seen Muslims hear the gospel and, and be baptized and follow and be strong lights. Christ says to pray for the Lord of the harvest because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Then Jesus tells them, now go. I think don't people, they kind of stop it. We're gonna pray for the workers, but then Jesus says, yeah, you're gonna pray for workers, but go. Revelation is guaranteeing us as well to say, hey, all people will have representatives before the throne. We wanna see Southern Baptist love Jesus, love his word, and give sacrificially to Lottie Moon Christmas offering so that the gospel can go to the ends of the earth and even specifically to the large Muslim groups like I work with. Good evening. Join us as we sing some favorite Christmas carols tonight. was 
You know, for weeks and weeks, we have been preparing our hearts to celebrate this very night. We have looked at the hope that the message of Christmas brings. We have looked at how God proved his love through sending Jesus. We've talked about the joy that that brings in our lives and how we can be at peace with God and at peace with others. Now, if you'll notice today, we've added an additional candle. And this candle is very special because this is what we call the Christ candle. And when we light it, we are acknowledging that we recognize and understand that all of these things that we've talked about were completely fulfilled in the person of Jesus. And we get our strength and our hope and our love and our joy and our peace from Jesus alone. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly hopeless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. And I know that's kind of a long passage, but it sums up everything that we've been talking about, preparing for this moment, how on our own we're sinful and we don't measure up. And that goes for all of us. Every single one of us falls short of God's glory. But at just the perfect moment. God sent Jesus into the world to be born in a miraculous way, to live an incredibly perfect life, and to die on a cross for the punishment for the things that we do that are wrong. And then three days later, after he had been buried, God raised him up to life again. And that is the reason we have hope, love, joy, and peace. And that only comes through Jesus. Because when we put our hope and our trust in Jesus as Savior, we are no longer enemies of God. But God calls us friends. And that gives us the power to change and impact the world around us. So today, as you spend time with your family celebrating this special moment, talk about those things that God is doing in your life. Talk about the ways that he's changed your heart over these coming weeks preparing. Talk about the new things that you've learned and make his name great today as you worship. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that in the midst of all of our sin, you sent Jesus to be the light of the world. That you sent him to 
show us and to teach us about you that we can trust in, in what your word tells us. And God, I pray for hope to enter our hearts. The hope that comes from a confidence in a relationship with you. God, bless our families as we take time to slow down today and to recognize and to remember and celebrate your birth. God, for those out there who have not made the decision yet to trust you, God, I pray that today would be that day. God, we love you so much, and we're so thankful for Jesus and for your incredible, faithful love to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration where Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also, also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of, and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was a, the, with child. And while they were there, the time, time came, came for her to give birth. birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel, and an of, the angel Lord of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good, good news, news of, of great, great joy, joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts heavenly host praising, praising God, God and saying, and saying Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said, said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see these things that have happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds, the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Your name. 
truly he taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace and change shall he break for the slave is a brother and in his name all the prayer You know, uh, my favorite time of the year uh, just about is Christmas Eve. And growing up, I would look forward to Christmas Eve, uh, perhaps even more than Christmas Day, uh, because that was when my family traditionally got together and uh, celebrated Christmas. Uh, we would uh, first go to uh, Christmas Eve service there in Henderson, Texas, First Baptist Church uh, there, and we'd have our candlelight service. We'd sing a lot of the same kind of hymns as what you heard Tonight, But then we'd go to my grandparents' house, old house uh, just next to a church. And uh, we would go in there and eat and eat and eat and probably do a little bit more eating. But eventually, we would roll into the living room. And uh, that was the time I was looking forward to growing up. Uh, first, we would read the Christmas story, uh, typically just out of the Gospel of Luke. And then we would begin to open gifts. And, and we had this Christmas tree, and gifts were piled up to about midway up the Christmas tree. And, and you couldn't hardly move around because of the presence and because of uh, the people. And it was just packed full. Had a big family growing up, and it was packed full. And for year after year after year, that was the tradition. Uh, go to Christmas Eve service, then go to my grandparents' house and eat, and then go in and open gifts, and see family members you hadn't seen in a long time. And that's just what we did for probably the first decade or so of my life. That was all I knew. That was the tradition uh, of my life. Uh, but, of course, as time goes on, 
as time goes on, uh, things change. Uh, life changes. The world uh, continues to spin, and things are not exactly the same anymore as what they once were. Uh, because uh, over the course of time, of course, we lost people that we loved. And uh, I've, I've got this picture. Uh, it was given to me one, believe it or not, Christmas Eve. I've got this picture, and it's a picture of my aunts and my uncle and my dad. And uh, as, as I've told you before, growing up, I, I was uh, a bit of a challenge uh, to raise, as you might imagine. So I had to have a, kind of a team of professionals to, to help me through those years of my life. And, uh, and there's this picture, and now only one remains. And it's a reminder to me, as we come to Christmas, uh, much of what this season really means and the power of what Christmas is all about. Because, you know, traditionally we have Advent. We have the different themes of Advent. You have hope and joy and love and peace. And traditionally the people uh, come up with other themes and, and they do it differently and, and celebrate a little bit differently. But those are common themes uh, celebrated at Christmas time related to Advent. And, of course, we've got the candles over there, and that, that's what that represents. That's what that symbolizes. And it's so important, it's so powerful to know uh, why Christmas uh, stirs up these themes, why we would remember these themes, why we would celebrate these themes this time of the year. Because we live in a real world, and this world that we are living in is a hurting world, and yet, right in the midst of the darkness, right in the midst of brokenness, right in the midst of, of a world filled with darkness and evil, the light shines and the darkness has not overcome it. And I just want real quickly, just tonight, to reflect on these themes of Christmas and how the coming of Christ and his life and his death and his resurrection, uh, how these themes relate to all of that. In the Gospel of Luke, we read about Mary and Joseph uh, leaving their hometown of Nazareth and going to Judea, as it says, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Uh, and that was the lineage of Joseph. And so they just imagine for a moment having to pick up everything. You're late in pregnancy, okay? And you've got a donkey, okay, or something like that, and you leave and go on this long journey. That's change. And I, I don't know about you, but that stirs up in my mind a feeling of absolute chaos uh, to have to pick up everything and go that far and, uh, and to be in that kind of vulnerable situation. But you know what we're reminded of? In chaos, in the chaos of life, there's a Savior's love. In the chaos of life, there's a Savior's love. Why were they going to Bethlehem? It was all part of God's divine plan. And the baby that Mary carried in her womb was none other than the Savior of the world. And God was with them in the midst of that chaos. God was with them. You know what? Right now, some of us, we might, in the state of things, we might feel a great sense of chaos, uh, like things are, are out of control and, and we just can't seem uh, to get things back to normal. I can remember growing up some things that were normal and that I would love to be able to bring some people back and, and to be able to, uh, to return to the way things were and our hearts grieve over that. And yet in the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our hurting hearts, we're reminded that God's love is present with us. That the whole reason they were going to Bethlehem in the first place was because it's all part of God's divine plan to send his one and only son, that Jesus was coming into the world to save them and to rescue them. We're reminded that in the chaos of life, there is a Savior's love, God's plan to redeem and to restore but the story goes on. It says in chapter 2, verse 8, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We're reminded that in the face of fear, 
there is good news of great joy. Certainly, probably, especially over the last year, we have felt a great sense of fear and anxiety just as a culture. And yet in the midst of all of that, uh, we're reminded of the good news of great joy. Can you just imagine these shepherds out in the field? Can you just imagine the fear that Mary and Joseph are going through, that these shepherds are going through when they see this amazing sight? These angels come in power and in glory. And uh, if you read scripture, uh, anytime an angel showed up, the typical reaction was fear because of the overwhelming power and glory of these spiritual beings. And so these shepherds are out in the field and they are overwhelmed, they are filled, overcome by fear. And yet in the midst of their fear, there's an announcement, a royal announcement, the good news of great joy, which is for all people, that in the city of David is born this day Christ the Lord, the Savior of the world. You see, right in the moment that we might feel fear, we need to be reminded that God took a decisive action 2,000 years ago, and that's what we're celebrating on this day. We're not celebrating some philosophy. We're not just celebrating some uh, cool ideas uh, that people had 2,000 years ago or some vision that somebody had or, or even just uh, some religious rituals that we would observe every year. That, that's not what we celebrate on Christmas. On Christmas, we are celebrating the fact that God in real time, in real history, took an action, a decisive action to send his beloved son into a world of darkness and filled with fear to bring good news of great joy for all the people, for all the people. And you know what? Sometimes just like Mary and Joseph, sometimes just like the angel, just like the shepherds, we don't see the full picture. We just see the big giants in the land and that fills our hearts with fear. But we need to be reminded our God is bigger than those giants. Our God is bigger, he's greater, he's working everything according to his plan, and he loves us. And he would take decisive action to restore our joy. I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 51, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And that's what God did in sending his son. In the advent of Christ was to bring restoration to this world. But the story doesn't end there. We've, got, we've talked about love. And we've talked about joy, but it also says peace. The story continues and says, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. You see, Jesus came bringing peace in the midst of our brokenness. There is the prince of peace. Now, I don't know about you. But uh, when I've got four kids, okay, and any time any of them were born, there was months of planning and preparation and getting ready. And we got to get a room ready. You got to buy clothes. You got to have a, a sh uh, all of these uh, showers, and you're you're doing all this stuff to prepare what for the baby coming. There is preparation involved. And here's Mary and Joseph, and I bet, I just want to imagine, they probably didn't think that they weren't going to have their baby in their hometown of Nazareth, that they were going to have to travel while she was expecting, while she was great with child. I imagine they did not envision there being no room for them in the inn, and the baby being wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger, basically in a feed trough. I bet that was not in their plans. And yet here we have the story of Christmas with the beloved Son of God, the King of glory, descending down, coming, taking on human form, and being born on our behalf. I would imagine in those moments there was a lot of brokenness, there was a lot of hurt, there was a lot of pain to get to that point. And yet when Jesus came, he came as the Prince of Peace. He came to fill our hearts with peace. He came to restore what was once broken. And yet the story is not over still because the reality is we say, okay, well, that happened 2,000 years ago. That happened 2,000 years ago, and yet here we are. And many of us, we still feel brokenness in our hearts. We still feel uh, the darkness and the weight of fear, and we still feel the chaos of this world. And so we say, okay, Jared, 
Obviously, he came and he did a, made a decisive action 2,000 years ago. He went to the cross and he helped us to have peace with God. He made us have peace with God on the cross that we might be forgiven, that we might have eternal life. And I want you to know right now that wherever you are, whatever you're going through in life, know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. The Bible tells us that he died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, that God wants all people to be saved. And so if tonight you're listening to this message and you don't know Jesus and you don't know the peace that passes understanding, I pray tonight you would trust in him. And yet even now we have something in common with uh, God's people 2,000 years ago because we are waiting. We are still waiting for God to take more action. The story continues. It says in Luke 2.15, When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Now I want you to uh, walk this journey with the shepherds. They were out in the field. Uh, an, an angel appeared to them. They're overcome with fear. And they're given an announcement. They're given a royal announcement that in the city of David as Savior, Christ the Lord has been born. So they're given this news, okay? And that's where we are in many respects. You are getting news tonight that a Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord. But here's the thing. They listened to that news and they responded to that news by going to Christ. They went to the Messiah. They trusted. They believed in Christ the Messiah. And they went to him having received the good news from the angels. And right now, tonight, that's where we are. That's where we are. We are in a place where we have received the good news of great joy that's for all people. And we trust in hope that Jesus returns and he sets everything right. Because when all seems lost, there is the blessed hope. When all seems lost, there's a blessed hope. You know, at the cross, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, uh, in that moment... All the disciples had abandoned him. Now, the reason they had abandoned him was very clear. They abandoned him because they felt, just like everybody else, it seemed very obvious to them that their king had been defeated. Their savior, their Lord, that they had trusted in, that they had followed for years. He was laying there on the cross. His shame before all humanity. Dead. And so they abandoned him and they went away. But three days later, three days later, the women were going to the tomb. And as they approached the tomb, they found the stone rolled away. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen, just as he told you. And so what did they do? Just like the angels, they went and they announced the good news of great joy for all people. They told Peter and John and the disciples, and Peter and John did exactly what the shepherds did. They went to where the Messiah was supposed to be. They went to the tomb to see for themselves, and they found the tomb empty. Why? Because God had taken decisive action. His son had died for the sins of the world on the cross. And God raised his son from the dead. So I want you to know something tonight. I want you to know this. And I want you to bury this deep in your heart, deep into your mind. That even though we live in a world where there is chaos, there is darkness, there is fear, there is uh, brokenness, there is suffering in the midst of this world. Christ came. He bore our griefs and our sorrows. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome. 
And I want you to remember that tonight on this Christmas Eve. That's why we come up with the themes and celebrate the themes of, of love and joy and peace and hope because Jesus made those a reality 2,000 years ago. My prayer for you is that you would trust in him in this season. You would rejoice in the goodness of God who loves you so much that he would send his son to die for you. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I pray that we would put ourselves back 2,000 years on that quiet, silent night where a peasant Jewish girl and her husband found no place to stay but where the beloved Son of God was born that night in Bethlehem with angels looking on, with shepherds looking on. And Father, I pray that we'd be reminded tonight of the power of the Christmas story. That we'd be reminded of the power of your love that overcomes, the power of your joy, of your peace, and of your hope. And tonight we wait, tonight we hope we know that one day you will set this world to right. You will make everything right, and we long for that day. Just like we may long to go back in many ways, we long for that day of restoration. Father, hear the prayers of your people. May your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.